Hello and thanks for watching another episode of ARFCOM News, your source for the finest 2A propaganda brought to you by TNVC.com. Today I want to tell you about two solid wins out of Nevada, even more corruption from the NRA, and we'll find out whether a Russian gun company ripped off an indie game studio's design. Nobody sued Ryder when some inbred racist prick used one to vaporize innocent kids. Nobody sued Tide for a stupid internet fad, and nobody sued Ford when some douche plowed through a parade either. In fact, I couldn't even find a single serious news article which even mentioned the make of the vehicle. Only the Babylon Bee had the courage to tell us the brand of vehicle responsible for that tragedy. Yet when some asshole did a Minecraft in Las Vegas a few years ago, people rushed to sue the makers of the Rifle and Bumpy Boys. But the Nevada Supreme Court has now unanimously ruled those manufacturers cannot be sued for the wrongful use of their products. Of course, I'm not here to make light of anyone's grief, but it is important that we recognize tools are not people and cannot make bad choices, nor can manufacturers predict the criminal misuse of their products. So you bought some nods and now you're ready to rock, right? You knew you needed training to run that rifle like a chad, so why should night vision be any different? TNVC.com is your source for the night fighter training you need to be effective. And Nevada keeps delivering with the good news by striking down their ban on Spooky Boys. Nevada Assembly Bill 286 would have banned the possession or sale of 80% receivers, but the Honorable John P. Schlegenmilch sided with Polymer 80 in their suit against the state. His ruling wasn't based on the fundamental human right to be armed, though. Rather, it was based on the vague wording of the statute, leaving the window open for the Nevada legislature to pass a more refined version in a future session. We'll be sure to keep an eye on them and give you the heads up if they need some attention, so stay tuned. I'm sure you're getting weary at this point of the steady trickle of new examples of the NRA's moral bankruptcy, but it is my job to tell you about it, and frankly, this is important. This means something. As important as it is, I don't think you'll find it remotely surprising that as their corruption was revealed and donations started to dry up, the NRA chose to siphon over $400 million from its charities to spend on lobbying and political campaigns as reported recently by OpenSecrets.org. No, the NRA being corrupt is about as surprising as a fart in a nursing home. Now, I know numbers are for nerds, so if you're interested in all the details, take a look at the link down there in the doobly-doo. I never claimed to be unbiased, but we always include our sources in the description below our videos. Sometimes art imitates life imitating art. Self-funded indie game developer Ward B has been working on a futuristic first-person shooter with RPG elements called Oceanic since 2019. They're really proud of their weapon designs and want them to seem like they could legitimately exist a couple hundred years from now. Ward B's CEO, Marcelino Sauceda, told IGN that Kalashnikov Concern approached them with the idea of using their design as a shotgutty sort of future gun called a Mastodon in the game as the basis for a redesign of their real-world MP155 semi-auto shotgun. Ward B would get publicity with their design on a real-life shotgun, and Kalashnikov Concern would get a cool-looking design and their branding on the in-game weapon. But Sauceda says Kalashnikov Concern ghosted them, then released the MP-155 Ultima back in August of last year. At first glance, the Ultima seems to be just an aesthetic change along with some pick rails, but it also has a computer module with a shot counter, camera, and corkscrew. The Ultima does generally look a little similar to Ward B's Mastodon, but only in a very general cyberpunky sci-fi shotgun kind of way, right? I mean, there are lots of guns with this kind of look. Except Ward B has a whole list of really specific aesthetic similarities, but the real kicker is how the detachable stock actually functions in pretty much the same way, physically. 
A representative from Kalashnikov Concern says that after their initial conversation, they researched Ward B and found they had no funding and concluded Ward B was unlikely to publish their game. Ward B has images and text conversations they claim proved Kalashnikov intentionally targeted them to steal the design. Ward B has issued cease and desist and DMCA takedown notices to no avail, but what really set them off was finding out the Ultima had been included in Escape from Tarkov, another first-person shooter focused on realism. Ultimately, there's nothing Ward B can realistically do about the whole situation other than what they are doing, which is to tell as many people as they possibly can. Which, if you think about it, was kind of the whole point in the beginning, right? All they were ever going to get from the relationship in the first place would have been exposure. So, so what do you guys think? Did Kalashnikov really rip off Ward B? Or is the design just yet another sci-fi shoddy? Or maybe this was the plan all along, just to get people talking about Oceanic. Well, friends, that's all I have for you today. But before I go, I just want to remind you to take the time to check to see whether you're still subscribed to our channel. A lot of our subscribers have been saying that YouTube has been kicking them off because our robot overlords know better than we do for ourselves what we want. So they just go ahead and unsubscribe viewers from any channels which happen to express wrong think like this one. Censorship makes puppies cry, and Captain America is very disappointed. So don't forget to check every now and then just to be sure you're still subscribed to us. And while you're at it, make sure you ring that notification bell so you never miss a word of our gun rights propaganda. And if you want to get email alerts for the best deals, projects we're working on, and the <laughs> hottest stuff you missed in the ARFCOM forums, you'll also find a Linktree link down there in the doobly-doo for our newsletter. And remember, if you want to help us keep bringing you banger content like this, please support the folks who support us. Not only does TNVC.com give you night vision with that cool, refreshing, never bitter taste that goes down smooth, they also have mounts, lights, training, and all sorts of gear to make you the bump in the night. I love you.